Welcome to your Inspirational Astrology Horoscope for Monday, March 25th, 2024. I'm Astrologer Dave Palmer, the Leo King, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Well, it's a special daily horoscope for you, this lunar eclipse in Libra we're going to be talking about. But I do have some stuff to talk about first. A lot of stuff actually going on. So I'll be in... Texas, Bastrop with Team Light for the solar activation on the total solar eclipse on April 7th and 8th. A couple tickets are left and we have a group. We have some, I think we have a couple rooms. They might be all gone by now, but it's all family. So we all figure it out. We got a telegram group. Make sure that you go to team, what is it? Teamlightstore.com forward slash events. I'm also going to be uh at disclosure fest again and this one of course with fade to black stairway to the stars on the solstice i'll be djing i'll be doing astrology it's a three-day event outdoor at lake castaic one day tickets are available as well i'll be djing friday doing my talk saturday make sure that you get tickets to that for the solstice it's going to be amazing and to do anything at lake Castaic is crazy and of course, my last thing to share here would be uh, my Eclipse Masterclass, which we have a couple more classes left. If you want to know how your prenatal, postnatal, your nodes, how eclipses also transiting and how they affect you in every situation. I have so much on a website, highvibe.tv. Just go click on Eclipse Masterclass and it's only 125 bucks. Or if you are a premium member to, to High Vibe, you get it in your subscription. So I make it pretty cool and you get all of the schools as well. All right, so we got all that out of the way here. Let's talk about this lunar eclipse in Libra. Well, it's setting off the energy for the eclipse season. If you were to go back to 2005 when we had these nodes, we didn't have a lunar eclipse in Libra. So the last time that we had a south node with a lunar eclipse in Libra was in 1987. And what's really auspicious about this is because if you go back just the last couple years when we had the north node in Taurus, we hadn't seen a solar eclipse in Taurus since the 80s, and we finally just got that in the last year and a half. So we are in... It already feels weird, right? The world changing. Well, you add that eclipse patterns have some very auspicious moments. And this one especially, since uh, it's been a long time since we've had a lunar eclipse at the south node in Libra. And this is really weird since all this Aries energy has so much Pisces behind it. A lot of it. Mars just made its ingress into Pisces. We've got Saturn and Neptune that are here, but Venus at the same time as well. And so we have to remember that no matter how much the sun's exalted here in Aries, the north nodes in Aries, we have Mercury and it's pre-shadow retrograde, right? But before it's going to do that, we also have Chiron. This is not your typical Aries season, even though it's going to feel like it once we get to that total solar eclipse. But there's still a lot of Pisces. So let's go into the chart because there's so much to talk about. It's... Ugh, there's a lot to show, but let's just show it. So this is definitely a rare event for us since we have not had one since 87, but this lunar eclipse happening at five degrees of Libra, it'll actually be happening in the next, I don't know, 15 minutes or so oh, for me in the next 30 minutes. 
but it's happening at midnight 17 uh, minutes uh, on Monday here on the West Coast Pacific time at five degrees of Libra and the sun of course going to be here at five degrees of Aries now it's cool because Pluto is in Aquarius so we're getting the sextile and the trine with this lunar eclipse we already are in Aries season so there is that energy of like all right things are starting to feel like we can at least kind of move forward there's a lot of haze here with Mars being in Pisces and with the North Node being in Aries, the dispositing aspect being Mars and even the Sun. Every, all this Mars energy keeps coming back to being in a weird place, especially being in Pisces. We have Saturn and Neptune that are in Pisces. Remember, we haven't seen those two in the same sign since 1523. And Venus exalted here and so we see jupiter and venus in a finishing its sextile so we're in a separating sextile and they've been making a yod over to the south node which has been really interesting to see and i would say that you know how do we really you know move forward in life it's not going to look perfect i've been saying this a lot but this is about letting go of oh the aesthetic how things aesthetically need to emotionally feel, physically feel, virtually feel, logically feel. This is so much about letting go of the perfectionism. Now, I know that Virgo sometimes is the one that gets that energy, but this is, this is a time where nothing is coming perfect. North Node is with Chiron. We're going to be seeing a total solar eclipse exactly conjunct Chiron here in the next two weeks. So, if you think anything's going to be perfect, and really the only perfectionism that there is is how the universe works, you're going to have to realize that nothing's perfect. Especially on the aesthetic side, Libra deals with that. Wanting it to, to be balanced, wanting it to be in this beautification, especially it happens to be the sign that's ruled by Venus. And Venus is in a nice mutual reception with Jupiter, right? So we got the two benefics in great aspect. Jupiter, of course, would rather be in Pisces and Venus back in Taurus. So that's an, that's, that is a classic, true, amazing alignment that you really go, that's a mutual reception. That's the bomb bomb. You can even see it expressed here. We got Venus here at plus nine and, we, and it boosts Jupiter. It was actually even more so when it was exact yesterday. So we're seeing that plus nine, plus seven there. But man, that's where you see the M right here in the mutual reception. But th that is where there's a lot of positives. But the interesting part, having this lunar eclipse in Libra with the south node and even these two planets in sextile and making and forming a yod to the south node is enjoy the beautiful things as they are, right? It's kind of like as is instead of like i want to make sure that something else changes with pluto and aquarius i feel like a lot of this is like yo everything's frazzled out everything's coming into this new vibe and we're getting used to a new vibe which means the aesthetic is going to be different the aesthetic to everything is going to be different this is also so much aries that it's gonna identify differently it's going to be defined as well mercury of course in that shadow before it goes retrograde at 27 degrees so mercury is starting to slow down here and we've had all the planets direct here for quite a while since we did see mercury go direct um but mercury of course slowed down now and we're seeing mercury yeah less than a degree a day now so again there's so much about the air energy here with the moon being in a lunar eclipse pluto and trying to that in an air sign as well and then even just having mercury here starting to slow down it's like can we let go of how we emotionally in intellectualize everything especially pluto being in aquarius pluto is very emotional the most emotional planet and then a, a lunar eclipse is is in an extreme emotional position of, of a let go, like let it go. All this Pisces here is saying, we're going to have to find the beauty in the in-between space we're in. Let's not forget that, except for the moon, 
right? Except for this lunar eclipse moon, right? If you just take Pluto, just sitting here in Aquarius, and you go all the way to Uranus here in Taurus, we are very tight. All the planets are very close, just from Aquarius to Taurus. And so you have to remember that in between all this, Pisces is what rules the roost. Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces. And Pisces is what the universe is really targeting. I know it seems like Aries since there's going to be a total solar eclipse coming up, but it's not. Even with eclipses, the planetary ruling energy is going to rule all, and Neptune, Poseidon, is ruling. And when it's 12th house to the sun and Aries in the first, using solar astrology, the biggest boo-boos can be made. And I would say that they can be made when we get lost in wanting to try and fix things that aren't broken and starting to realize that maybe things are not broken within the purview of our own life and ourselves and making sure that our perspective on things are true before they really get lost into some sort of quick action on things. This is not a time to just like, I'm just making the most radical change now. Let, let eclipses do that on its own, but don't start to get involved with these very extreme energies. Jupiter and Uranus are getting closer as well. We've been seeing these two in the Helio astrology already made their conjunction in the last week. But it's about the staying power of Taurus. And so with Jupiter Uranus here, it's not like it was back 13, 14 years ago when it was in the Aries and after it left Pisces. It was, it was about the big move you made. In Taurus, it's about the big stand that you make. What do you keep holding on to that actually grows into something beautiful? And because we've been seeing a lot of good aspects, especially with Venus, Jupiter, and mutual reception, or even we have to remember that this lunar eclipse is making a sessi quadrant to Uranus exactly an exact 135. And then we are seeing a semi-square from the sun to Uranus. And so with Uranus being in Taurus and then looking at, well, Pluto's here in Aquarius, it's not as do or die as we think it is, especially about the choices that we're making in our lives. And that's where the illusion is, that things are out of balance, things are unfair. This can bring up a lot of relationship drama. Venus and Saturn already have made their conjunction and they're separating, but Venus and Neptune are coming closer. And these are the two planets that make Pisces Pisces besides Jupiter, right? Venus is exalted here. Neptune, of course, is the ruler. And we have to pay attention to this because it's about your subconscious. It's about also creating fantasy out of thin air. And it's hard because it could be seen as, no, I'm doing what's best for me. But this could also be feeling unfairly looked upon. It's about just looking at the most basic situations and going, where's my staying power? Where's my values? Are they spiritually connected to my staying power within myself and my value of myself? Stay there first and let things grow. This is not a time to just keep jumping or to keep running or to keep trying to also sometimes paint the roses red when they're actually not red. This can be very difficult because Aries and Libra, it always gets associated with yourself and then relationships. This deals with your own self and then the outside self that you're looking at out on the horizon. And so it's funny because it might look like you know, if you were to, let's say, just wake up in the middle of a, either a sunset or a sunrise, you would have to figure out for a second, is it, if you didn't have a watch and you didn't know time, you'd be like, is that, is the sun setting or not? No, you'd have to look at, okay, where's my position? Where's the ecliptic? And you could figure it out if you understood that. But if you didn't, you could be thinking at sunrise when it's really sunset. And you could be thinking at sunset when it's really sunrise. So this is a time where people can really be acting, especially in Aries, right? with Mercury that's going to retrograde and come through this zone in this shadow zone and conjunct Chiron multiple times and then come back on top of the North Node. We don't have the point yet. 
fully. So if you think that you figured out the point, you don't. You don't have the exact coordinates at this moment of where anything is going. Jupiter and Uranus are going to take us on a thrill ride and an adventure, but it's going to be through the energy that you've been doing. I'm going to use that term again, staying power, right? That staying power, what if you keep going on? This isn't about quitting. This isn't about, you know, well, oh, let me just let this go in my life. I, it's just, It's just not beautiful anymore. It's not feeling good. It's like, get out of your feelings and really start to actually look at, okay, where is my next turn if I do try and erase the board? We should actually look at this a little bit like Aries in a war situation. Are you just wanting to just like declare victory when really you're declaring victory off a battle and not winning the war? I hate to even use that term since war is happening all over the place and that's going to be escalating extremely through this Aries transit. But it, we have to remember that just erasing things on the board, to, that's like painting the roses red. Like, oh, I, it looks better. My ego wants this to be better and it looks better. And it, with Chiron here, there's humble city waiting for you. With the Sessi Quadrant to Uranus here, you know, people could have this like inkling to be like, no, I know exactly where this is going. So I'm going to do this and it'll go there. And, and nothing is going to go the way that you think it's going to go right now. This is not about breaking apart beautiful situations that have staying power things that you've been continually growing and building on. And that's what makes this very hard because I think a lot of people get tired. They get bored. And we live in a world now where it's much easier to take the fast route, right? Let me find the fi faster route of how I'm going to get through my life or the quicker route to get to where I need to go to. And that is not what to do right now. If you want to talk about real patience, Taurus and Pisces, it's the patience of the farmer mixed with the patience of the highest of all God. And God is extremely patient with us as humans to figure things out. And a farm is extremely patient of when it's going to grow. But when you stay on that land or when you stay connected with God, that's where the true blossoms are. This Aries energy just wants a quick, instant return. The Libra energy is wanting peace. Well, let go of how it's supposed to look. Because really, I think the peace can be found by not taking extreme action right? Like doing too much or even erasing the board to be like, you know what? I'm starting fresh and clean with nothing. And it's like, well, when you get to Taurus season, when Jupiter, Uranus are going to meet right after this total solar eclipse, when we get to the beginning of Taurus, that's when they meet. What are you going to have? There's something really weird about Jupiter, Uranus transits. One thing I've noticed is every time they come around every 13 years, the more that you have, you know, disconnected to, sometimes it's a good thing. And then sometimes it's more of like, shit, I shouldn't have let all that shit go. So I could actually have brought a lot, especially in Taurus, though. That's what I'm saying. This is new. Last time that happened was 1940. And, you know, everybody thought it was going to be this or that when it was really like radar and weapons in war. Uh, and, you know, people didn't have a lot, Right wasn't about money. I know a lot of people think it's going to be about money, but we have to remember it was about the new way of trading goods. So, you know, this is not a time where I would say like, you know, Huckleberry Finning this or Tom Sawyering this is going to do you any good, right? We want to look at this as like, this is a world that's evolving and a world that's going to start just giving the little baby steps and pebbles in front of us of what the walkway is even going to look like to this new world. So doing that with, you know, it might not be nice to have the beautiful and spiritual things in your life instead of just wasting it away. It's really easy for people to let go of everything right now or just be like, I'm over this, I'm done. Because, you know, Libra can get especially frazzled out as well. I'm going to call this frazzled because when everything's out of balance, it starts to go, oh my gosh, and it starts to freak out. Or if it's like, you know what, I'm kind of bored, right? Because this energy could bring up like, I'm bored with the staying power. Jupiter and Uranus are doing a big test. Who is going to continue building and growing things that are going to skyrocket out of nowhere? Or who's going to just be the one that just keeps <sighs> mulching everything that they can and then not really wanting to do the work and plant? We got to think about this with planting. 
this Aries energy at the same time. This, is, this reminds me of when we had the Pluto-Uranus squares back in 2012 through 2015 and those lunar eclipse and solar eclipse energies we had in 2014 when the nodes were reversed. And I remember at that time, uh, you know, it just felt like, you know, it was easy to try and just, oh, I'm going to connect with this. Or I'm going to connect with that. It's like jumping around energy. And we're back in a Pluto-Uranus square. It's not exact, of course, but they're in fixed signs. So we have to remember that this is a time where the more that you continue to have, the better. The more that you continue to move forward. And I would say with getting rid of that, you know, reflecting too much off, well, what's, what's the right thing to do here? It's like, it's the simple thing to do. The simple thing is to continue moving forward, to continue building, to continue your spiritual awareness, especially psychologically. This is not a good time to just mask it as, I'm going to have a better life because I'm going to let go of all these situations or I'm going to end something. And it's really self-undoing. It's really subconscious, you know, self-destruction. We have to remember that Neptune's ruling all. There is nothing here in its home sign except Neptune. And when you have this many planets, the two malefics, Mars and Saturn, which are going to be conjuncting on the next eclipse in two weeks with Venus that's heading towards Neptune, you don't want to put yourself in a position. It's very easy right now to say like, oh no, I'll get there in a couple of weeks and I'll figure that out in a couple of weeks or whatever. I'm telling you in a couple of weeks, it won't be what you think it is now. This is about finding a way forward and finding a way if you want to take this on the deeper level where where is the light within you right this is about the light within you and realizing whatever situation you're in and multiple situations you're in in your life we are all north node chiron chironing it. especially you're going to feel it like you've never felt it before with this total solar eclipse in two weeks so really this lunar eclipse is in my opinion helping us get prepared it's helping us get prepared because you have to realize that every single person, whatever situation you're going through, work, friends, love, however you're looking at life through whatever lens has a Chiron situation going on. A situation where it looks like it's a little weird and a little different and not, you know, and that's where the great illusion is, is this lunar eclipse in Libra, which we haven't had with the South Node since 1987 can be the, oh, that's the better job on the horizon. I'm going to go do that. This is the better relationship. I'm going to go do that. This is the better thing. Uh, this is the better thing. This is the better thing. And it's like, nope, that's not, that's not what it is. This is like you learning to accept and, and to guide yourself and realize, you know, Chiron is taking a sacrifice through learning to teach. So we have to remember that this is like the more that you continue trying to find a way to move into something that you think is better, you have to be honest with yourself and be like, well, is it really as bad as I thought it was? This would be like a commander being like, well, you know what? Look at those fresh new order of cannons I can get. Let's just throw all these ones away. I don't like them. I don't like how heavy they are and they make all my soldiers move them this way. It's like, well, the order got canceled. Some other country bought them all. And it's like, we shouldn't have sold them. That's what I'm saying. It's really easy to see, oh, this looks better over here. Because that's the story of Libra is what, what's on the horizon that looks better. People forget that. Libra is a lot more than just relationships. It's, it's, it's the deeper understanding of like, what's out there at, outside of myself? What's going on within myself? What is it that I want to have? It's very easy in Aries to say that, but really what we want is over in Libra always, right? What do I see myself aligning with? And so, especially if it's new situations of life that you want to align with, this is where it's like, okay, I have all of the skills, the talents. Let me continue to build from where I'm at instead of taking crazy leaps. Because Jupiter and, and Uranus and Taurus is a crazy leap, but it's a crazy leap of what you've already been building upon taking its great leap. 
what already is your skill inside taking a great leap, not you actually like leaping, right? This is Taurus, where we the most fixed earth energy. And with even Eros, right? In sextile to Venus here and making also at the same time a yacht over to the south node. But Eros has been with Jupiter. And then, of course, Juno is in a weird space here. It's at 20 degrees. Or no, sorry, it's at 8. It's That's Black Moon Lilith, yeah. Uh, 8 degrees here. So we've been seeing the opposition to Saturn and so forth. And Juno's retrograde. Again, this is where it's like, it's a lot, it seems a lot better to have something in life that just feels more exciting, fast. And I'm telling you that the regrets, one of the biggest things that Pisces does for all of us that we learn through the sign is regret. And we have to remember at the same time too, it also could be like, well, I never did anything, right? But this is a really hard battle that's going on where it's more like if you're too attuned right now to the aesthetic of how things should be, you know, this is where Aries is reminding you with North Node and Chiron, like no matter how many times you try to change it, you know, you're going to even get on the other side or go to it. Let's say it's like, I'm going to go on another team in the war. Oh, well, they might have different uniforms. They might look cooler and they might look like they are doing better, but inside they all have the same problems. And maybe they have more rats or they have more problems in the trenches. It's like you don't realize that this is a moment about acceptance of self. And what are you letting go of that is judging too hard? You might be judging yourself too much. You might be judging another too much. You might be judging the whole situation too much. You might be overly, you have never, you haven't been through a south node lunar eclipse in Libra since 87. So this is also very deeply connected with the last time we had one at five degrees was all the way back March 25th, 1633. And this was the exact year that Galileo got excommunicated. Mars was in Pisces, right? So again, this is where like the church was doing crazy moves, right? It was like excommunicating Galileo. Are you excommunicating other people? Are you excommunicating yourself? Are you, you know, like this is, this is where the blame always likes to get put on another instead of yourself. There was a lot of things going on there in 1633. A lot of war stuff, but there was a lot of common aspects, but that was the last time that we had a Lunar eclipse, and it was the same thing. It was a, a prenumbral eclipse as well, but it was the, the last time that you can find a lunar eclipse at five degrees of Libra with the sun in, Libra, in Aries at five degrees was all the way back in 1633. And um, Saturn was an immutable sign. Jupiter and Pluto were conjuncting near where we're going to see the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And I found this really fascinating um, because that was a year that really you know, especially whether it's people kind of losing it through their belief systems and judgment, which, I mean, that's really where a lot of the war stuff is going on is the different belief systems that are happening in religion and so forth. And, and here's Mars and Pisces, right? So it's very, it's very hard because Mars and Pisces definitely feels like a Mars in the 12th, but with Saturn there, that's a multiple, you know, hit there with the two malefics. And I would say with this conjunction coming in two weeks with the total solar eclipse and with Venus exalted here, Neptune being the ruler, Neptune's about to go past 27. And so Neptune's coming out of its shadow and it's going to head to 29 degrees Pisces. So that's another way to look at it. Are you going to just Tom Sawyer it? Sorry, there might not be on the river that you thought, you know, Huckleberry Finn and the raft that you want to go down. Like, th this is where you do not want to ruin your life. Very easy to ruin your life right now over doing too much, trying too much. And that's what's hard because in solar astrology and horoscopic astrology, I'm sorry to say, but it might be a great sun exalted in Aries and it might be a north node and a Chiron here, but Mercury, all the weird shit, you know where it's happening? In Aries, it's weird. You know where the, the secret is four planets behind the sun 
in the sign behind the sun. So even the sun that's normally the most exalted, happiest sun, here it's not even close. It's only at a plus four here. We have Venus at a plus nine and we have Saturn here, or sorry, Jupiter here at a plus seven. And we've been in a world where if you just look over the last four years, it was Saturn that, ne that beat everything out for so long when it was in Aquarius and when it was in Capricorn. So this is about the enjoyment of the things you have. Jupiter saying, what do you have? Let's keep exploring that. And Venus and Pisces is like, all right, let's see the spiritual aesthetic from it. Because that's the problem in Libra is it starts to get mental. It starts to look like, well, that looks better. Or like you go, that's why it rules fashion. Like, you know what? Maybe you should do it with that top. Go back and fucking dress or whatever. Go back in the changing room. It's like, that's where people are going to get lost right now. Let me just keep like, changing my life out and keep swapping things in and out and see what happens. And that's a subconscious thing that's going on. So it's really easy right now to, to put the, you, you might not even realize it, put the blame on the job, put the blame on the relationship, put the, bl the blame on something and then be like, I'm going to go do this now. Oh, okay. Again, I'm going to call this the, the Huckleberry Finn, you know, lunar eclipse, right? Like, yeah, I'm going to go do that. And like getting my little knapsack on and walking away. And that's where Chiron is. And that deals with wheelchairs, homeless. Chiron, Chiron is not a fun place to be. So it's really easy right now to just, and, and let's be honest, we don't know where all these weird buses are going and shit that take migrants to places. I know they try to make it look like, uh, you know, it's they're here to do this. They could be being sacrificed, right? In another way. That's why with North Dona Chiron, it's not safe to be out on the street. It's not safe for, to, for you to start putting yourself in positions where you're easily swept up to be into somebody else's war or to even be sacrificed. And so, this this is easy for people to just self-sacrifice in a negative way more than a positive way. The positive way is going to be with Venus and Jupiter and in your staying power, but that south node in Libra is tricky and it's dispositing Venus and it's exalted in Pisces. So it's like, it does not look like ecstasy. It's about finding the ecstasy within that's there, right? It's It's not about getting lost in you know, trying to make the next move, like, well, I'm not feeling the ecstasy right now. Give me another one or fucking let me go talk to that person. Now I'll have a better one or da 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 da. It's very easy right now to be like, I feel misaligned. I feel this, that this over on this other side is not coming to what I want. Libra is about the other side. It's the other side of the horizon. And no, it does not look like a beautiful sunset right now. That's what Libra is the glyph of. And we have to remember that finding our energy levels right now with Mars that happens to be in Pisces. And ever since Saturn and Neptune really had the sun cross over them and all these transits that have been happening in Pisces, getting your energy back is still not favorable. So if you're extra tired, you're extra feeling like you're at the end of your rope on a bunch of things, this is where that Aries energy has to continue to keep going. Because with Neptune coming to 29 degrees this year, Pisces, uh, Pluto really, I think, is the, the, the wolf in sheep's clothing here is it's not going to stay in Aquarius. It's going to go back into Capricorn. So it's almost like people could actually use this lunar eclipse as like, I, I'm making my big jump now when we're all going to have to face that timeline that we've been going through for 16 years again. We're all going to have to face Saturn's home again, right? We're all going to face the weird shit. And there's way too much subconscious shit just in the collective, right? There's too many elephants in the room, right? So you have to address the elephant in the room instead of running away from it. And that's the problem that I'm seeing right now with this lunar eclipse is like, I can just get rid of the elephant in the room by going to some place where there is no elephant in the room or becoming somebody that doesn't have an elephant in the room. 
No, Pluto's going to take us back. Neptune's going to take us to the edge, be on a cusp. Mercury retrograde is going to retrograde over Chiron multiple three times, two more times, right? It's going to be on top of at least one time retrograde and one more time direct. And then stop on the North Node. So that means that we don't know where the point is. So if you're making some sort of crazy decision right now, especially the other thing, and this is, this is, this is where deep astrology comes in in life, right? Venus at 16 degrees is in semi-square to Pluto. Venus is in quincunx to the south node. So the south node in Libra, disposited by Venus, is in quincunx to Venus. Pluto, that's enshrined to this lunar eclipse, but Pluto being Aquarius, which is, oh, that's right, Uranus rules Aquarius, and Uranus is in sesi quadrant to this lunar eclipse, and, oh, at the same time, we've got the sun, which is in semi-square to Uranus. So this is triggering this Uranus, and it's really triggering this Pluto that deep down you want to move forward in the craziest way instead of the humble, hard, harder route that is forced in front of you, right? So it's almost like, I want to go, I'm going to drop for you. It's like, let's say this is you and this is the hurdle. And you're like this, I'm tired. It's too hard. I want to go up Uranus <laughs> and go on top and then come back down. You want to, you want to Mario brother it right? You don't want to face it and just get over the next hurdle and keep going and seeing that the grace and the beauty is actually in that. But right now it looks a lot easier. I'll just leave the job and I'll find another one eventually. What I'm trying to show you is that there's a huge red X or orange X or caution X being like, that ain't going to happen. There is nothing that you're seeing that you think is there. Okay. This is the illusion. What the truth is, is you need to face what's reality. Like, yeah, we're all going through weird, hard, challenging aspects, but it's Chiron stuff. It's about acceptance. All this Pisces about learning to surrender spiritually and trust in spirit. But if you want to give the universe the ability to frazzle your life out, well, it's going to be very easy for you to do that by trying to find the easy route. The easy route will literally be the craziest, weirdest, and not too evolutionary route. Sure, it will evolve you eventually, but I'll, I'll just be honest with you. It will be going backwards. So instead of looking at Aries as me, 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 look at is it like I don't want to have to go back to winter again. I'm in the spring. And so it can be very easy right now to actually think that you can leap into something without realizing the major tailwinds that are hanging above and doing your light work and staying on course and having the courage to continue to keep growing, to face every challenge and to keep growing though, the most beautiful things that are within you and to stop putting all the blame outside right? Like, oh, this is the problem. And I'm not the person that's to blame. That's not going to get you anywhere. Right? So th this is a really interesting time to see these alignments. I mean, if you look at this south node, it is beyond just aspected it is and it's not it's not by a normal aspect it's it's the weird stuff even the lunar eclipse if you notice only has that separating trine to pluto so it it's almost kind of like a a false you know oh i'm moving forward to find my beauty to find eternal bliss when eternal bliss is actually on the quest that you're not giving up on, right? Because you have to look at like you giving up right now is actually the way you should look at anything. Like, oh, you're gonna give up? It's easy to give up. It's easy to then put it as, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do this. This is gonna make my life better. You know. And and we're we're facing heavy illusion. I mean, if I were to, um. Just kind of for one sec here, um, take you to the eclipses 
of yeah, all solar, yeah. So if you go back to uh, 2004 and five, right? We had the Aries eclipse of 2004, the 29 degree one that we just had in, what was that, 2023, right? Then May 4th, 2004, a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. October 14th, 2004, um, a solar partial in Libra at 21 degrees. A lunar in Taurus at 5 degrees on October 28th, 2004. By the solar hybrid, April 8th, 2005. So it was a solar hybrid eclipse, right? It was a it was strong magnitude at 19 degrees where we're going to have the one we just, that we're going to have in two weeks. Then we went into a lunar prenumeral Scorpio 40 degree eclipse. And then in 2005, on October 3rd, a 10 degree Libra solar annual eclipse, then a lunar partial eclipse in Aries. Then we went to Virgo. We're going to Pisces with the lunar, right? This year, but it did not hit Libra with lunar. So you have to go back and you have to go, oh shit, it was in 87. And yeah, there it is. Lunar prenumeral eclipse, April 14th, 1987. And there was the eight degree solar eclipse that was on March 29th of 87 at eight degrees, right? So if you look at this eclipse, the last one that you had, if you were alive then, it was at 23 degrees. This was when Pluto was in Scorpio. It was Mercury and Aries like now. Jupiter was there. The North Node was with Jupiter. Now we're with Chiron. Right? Mercury was behind the sun, meaning it already had, it's catching up to the sun. The retrograde had ended. Uh, Venus was in Pisces at 19 degrees. Mars was in Gemini at five degrees. And we had Neptune retrograde, Uranus retrograde. We had Saturn in a mutable sign. But, you know, to go back that far, I mean, to be honest with you, this one's way more complicated. So wake up because you know, a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of illusions going on. If people want to know why is all this weird AI shit happening, like with the princess and all that shit, like, like think about that's the illusion, the aesthetic of wanting to look a certain way. Right. And, and that's the problem. I mean, even in her new video, her ring goes off multiple times while she's sitting on the park bench that has the stripes from her shirt that was seven years ago. She wore the same shirt, had the same hair. So it looks like at least in the AI community, people have found the original video they used to mimic her and her ring comes off multiple times. So I, I don't know what to tell people, but a lot of people are living in this really crazy illusion, especially about that shit. And, and you can see how people are trying to paint the roses red right now, right? That's, that's what's, that's, what's happening in the monarch is they're trying to paint the roses red. And that's what's really happening there. It's really scary how many people have fallen for the emotional charade of this. Like they used a fake pick. They won't address that. And then they say, ah, oh, we want it. We, it was because I have cancer. Okay. And then the same, the next day, people in the UK are experimenting with the new technology for the cancer shots using the same shit that was experimental that is killing people now and has killed so many people over the last four years. I mean, like, honestly, like, I can't believe people are not awake to this, right? And, you know, that's what you can tell with the South Node Lunar Eclipse is like people are so emotionally attached to the story of her and won't believe anything else. You know why? Because that makes them feel better. Even if it is a horrible situation like cancer, it makes them feel better. They want to believe it. They want to feel because they, they want to get it off themselves. And they also don't want to see like they're being like completely manipulated and lied to. And that's a telltale sign that you haven't faced your own shit. You know, so this is really the eclipses that are about facing your own shit. And again, those that are not on high vibe or 
not on uh, my Instagram because I did a reel about this the other day. Like, I'm sorry to tell you all out there, but <laughs> like, like you're watching a complete breakdown of trying to post like posture everything uh, to aesthetically look a certain way when really either she's not there anymore or, you know, they're going to do a Diana situation this way, or they're, they're trying to bow out completely. Remember that Pluto and Aquarius always brings up issues with Royals. And I think the big wake up is, is, is for people in any of the, I guess, countries that the crown is part of. So if you're Canadian and Australian or you are in the UK, what are you doing? This is your time to fucking end monarch rule. To demand answers that you've been lied to. But of course, you're seeing the opposite without them having to ask you to do it. Right? The revolution should be happening right now. And if you're in any of those countries, but it's not. And that's the sad part because that's how they get you hook, line, and sinker. Right? And so... You know, a lot of people are going to start saying over these eclipses, you'll hear like, oh, this is where you take your power back. Well, with North Node Chiron, it's not about getting too cocky about it because Chiron will, you'll feel, you'll, you won't, you'll, you'll lose that cockiness for almost maybe forever and have to regain it back a long time from now. This is not about being cocky. This is not about being too strong. This is about like knowing how to, understand the identification of like, okay, if I want this in my life or if this is who I am, you know, I'm not going to create an illusion of how that looks. And when it doesn't look the way that I want to, it's more like, let me accept and identify what is in front of me and how it looks instead of hold on. Let me, I want to lose myself into the way that I want it to look. Right. So even the weird parts of whether it's VR or AI is the, it's that, weird part of what tricks you into actually being like it makes you want it to look that way that you almost believe that it is you actually you know watch an ai video of of kate with her ring coming off and wearing the same shirt from seven years ago in videos um and uh, this is a royal i don't think she, they're wearing the same shirt from seven fucking years ago right so uh, but it makes you want to. It gets so close that it makes you want to believe it. And if you're wanting to believe it, that's how you know. Instead of just looking at things as they are and knowing with this North Node and Chiron, like, yeah, shit, shit does look weird and we should call out what does look weird. And it's about addressing things that look weird. It's also like not being afraid to do that. Where the energy of Aries is not afraid to lead and tell others like, hey, this is fucking weird. Like, this is not normal. This is like, it, it, does anybody else see it? And when you start to see a lot of other people see it too, it's like, oh, okay, so there is a large part of the collective that is losing their minds again. There is, there is a large part of the collective that can't see the bigger picture here, right? That, that, that are like identifying with what they want to see. Which is sad because a lot of people like almost like are happy that that, oh, well, at least that describes why she was gone. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's another elephant in the room there. It's like, obviously, every article besides her for the last three weeks has been what? Why are cancer rates of people her age and younger skyrocketing around the world? Only in the countries that took the experimental shot. Hmm. But again, we are in a world right now that people actually don't believe excess death or that we just reached the first time that humanity is dropping in population, the last time it happened was the Black Plague. Look it up. Official story. Everywhere. It's in the Lancet. So, we're watching a Black Plague happen in front of our face and they're putting you with fake people to say they're around and they're okay to hide their Black Plague blemishing look. But what's weird is it's happening on the inside now. 
That's a lot to think about. <laughs> you know. All right, let's see what we got card wise. Again, I have my master class for the eclipses for your chart of how to read your chart, your eclipses, what eclipses come into your life and how they shake you up, how they really also bring back themes um, and how to see through them. You know, there's a lot more to it. I got two more live classes left. You can watch the other recordings forever on highvibe.tv. Just go to highvibe.tv, click on Eclipse Masterclass. Uh, the classes are on Wednesdays. And the recordings are always available. You can even watch them on your Apple TV or any of the apps or be part of the community. I'd love it if you were a YouTuber and you came and subscribed to watch my daily video horoscopes, my deep astrology every week, full disclosure. I still do sun signs. Sometimes I don't do them. Sometimes there'll be a week where I don't do them like this week because I'm overwhelmed. I had to move this all downstairs to a guest room for me and I'm on green screen. So um, the studio has been going through a lot of stuff. Termites finally are getting tented on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So I'll be working from home. And, you know, we're all dealing with nightmares, which Chiron stuff, nightmares and Aries is just stuff that just isn't the way that we want it to look, right? Like, of course, I don't want the studio to have to have all these problems, but they have to get fixed. So instead of just like, fuck, I'm bailing out, or people tell me, get, get rid of this studio. It's like, I have a commercial lease. It's ending at the end of the year. It'll be, I'll be out of there in the end of the year. Or maybe I won't. Maybe that's the other part. It's like, guess what? What if, what if the whole universe changes and everybody wants to be part of High Vibe when social media gets rid of astrology and tarot oh shit right gotta keep the studio jupiter and uranus keep maintaining the stuff that's hard that's where the payoff in taurus is gonna be running around like a just off your carnal desires only and just like wanting to change things on an instant but you remember that scorpio plays a lot to, with now Pluto and Aquarius, right? Like having having just this instant, like I, w I just want to get where I want to go or just go into the future wherever I want to go and just like jump timelines exactly when I want to get there. That That's that's another destruction waiting for you. So all right. I know people don't know how to do live streams yet with green screen live like this. They just don't. It's really weird. Especially in the spiritual community. Like you have to have a great graphics card. You can't use an apple. All right. Even with my M3 max apple that just came out, it can't handle this. So or to share the chart with that clarity and like zoom doesn't let you actually use 4k so you know it's like i don't know people just i don't know i guess nerds are gonna win all right what, what do we have card wise King of Pentacles upright. I, I, you know what? This is my message. That's so funny because I have my green screen on. King of Pentacles. You have everything that you need. Start utilizing from the stuff that you already have. That's the big lesson of Jupiter Uranus, right? Every country in 1940 had to start utilizing what they had. So they did drafts. And what did they do? They had all the women go make all the tank shells and do it, right? Like it wasn't like they went and outsourced. So, like Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus is like, what do you already have? Start using all the stuff that you already have. Stop trying to look for the be bigger, better thing that you'll, you're going to have. You already have the value. You already have the greatest things. You already have the great things in your life that are going to get you to where you need to go. Stop looking for this crazy reroute. Stop trying to be air traffic control right now with Pluto and Aquarius because why do you think all the planes are having problems? Why is the FAA throwing an alert from April 7th to 10th. We have a geomagnetic storm right now that's extreme that's hitting the earth right now. What is going to happen over the next two weeks? Why do you think, you know, the air traffic is, is crazy? Why are planes almost hitting each other within a thousand feet all the time? 
uh, people, Pluto and Aquarius is going to be craziness in the skies. And, and more importantly, the more that you try to jump and just go wherever you want to go, it's not, that's not how it works. It's divine timing. And this is not a moment about divine timing to make a big, you know, oh, I'm going to make my life look better. It's about, you know, you're probably wanting it to look better more than actually be better. And we got a queen of swords in reverse. So, yeah, the clarity is not there. You know, I just feel like with these two cards, that's crazy. We got a king and a queen, but we got the queen reversed. And that queen of swords reversed is like, there could be that energy of being pissed off of like, damn, I know the truth. Like, I wanted it to be a different truth, but I have to be honest with myself. I do have all the things I need. I have to stop looking outside to some crazy place to try and find myself worth, to try and find whatever I need to move forward in my life with. I already have the things. The Queen of Swords always is trying to get to that place right that she rises above the clouds to be able to see clarity, and we, we're not there. I would not be making some major lifelong changing decisions on this lunar eclipse. I'll pick one more for confirmation. Emperor, he's on the staying ground. That's what's interesting, you know? You'd think the emperor would be running. No, he's on top of his throne that he got because he knows people. He knows how to get along with people. He didn't get there by blood. He got there from the hard work that he does and that stable position that he has of wisdom, knowledge, and more importantly, also the ability to get there and the long foresight to know when it's the right time to do it and when it's not painting the roses red. I appreciate you all very much. Make sure that you join us on highvibe.tv every day or just you can download the apps and subscribe through there. But if you want premium, you have to subscribe through the website and that gives you access to all the schools. That should be changing here too. I have a, a meeting this week about uh, being able to have multiple subscription tiers on the apps and even purchase uh, special programs and so forth on the apps too. So I appreciate you all very much. Thanks for all the love. Please uh, remember, I did a special eclipse video just talking about how to get through these eclipses, um, which I put up here on YouTube on Saturday, yesterday. But much love to you on this eclipse. I'm not able to do spiritual dance music anymore on YouTube. My, my channel has been completely one strike warned. You can't do it. So I started a Twitch. Um, but with the studio tomorrow, having to, it's my last day there. And I have to get a bunch of stuff out before they tent it. I'm not going to be able to do spiritual dance music. So I will be doing it uh, on the next eclipse, but I'll be in Bastrop, Texas uh, with Team Light uh, for the solar activation. So hope to see you all in Texas. Much love to you all. Hope to see you on High Vibe, and I'll see you on the next horoscope. Much love. Please.